Islam is real, the Israelite school of universal and practical knowledge under commanding General Yohanna presents the Lord's 55th annual Passover. That's right, the Lord's 55th annual Passover is rapidly approaching. Commanding General Yohanna is calling for all blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans to remember what the Lord did for us by saving us from our oppressors and choosing us to be a special people unto him. The real Jews and Israelites. Passover will be held in Durham, North Carolina. Pay your Passover fee. Anyone 17 years of age or older must pay $200. Come and enjoy fresh lamb, unleavened bread, and the spirit of Christ. Can't wait to see you all there, Israel. Shalom. Gathered on streets and corners, all is feeling righteous. Real particular, nobody else dared to compare to. Train for war, men of war, and war like apparel. Prefer our leaders can't get between us. Watch Come look at this board over here. If you are on this board, you are one of the 12 tribes of Israel. And God, you are God's favorite people, God's chosen people, God's children. And we're going to prove it to you right here in the Bible. We're not just speaking from our emotions, how we feel. We're talking straight out of the Bible. The Bible is a witness to everything that we'll be talking about. Go ahead. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. And the Lord shall bring the, us into Egypt, you into Egypt again. Last night, see those Native Americans. You didn't need to know no backdrop. This is Moses talking to the children of Israel. So no doubt about it. If you fit this scripture right here, you are the children of Israel. And Moses told the children of Israel, you should be born into Egypt again. Egypt, which is uh, the Greek word, Egyptos, which means bondage. Land of bondage. So Moses is saying, you're going to go. You, children of Israel, are going to go into bondage again. With what? With shit. With what? Ships. Who came into bondage with ships? It's a famous captivity known on this earth when we came into bondage with ships. It started off with the Latinos and the Native Americans when Christopher Columbus came over and he took our Native Americans and Latino brothers and took them back to York. The transatlantic slave trade started right here with the Latinos and the Native Americans. So Moses is saying that the children of Israel will be brought back into bondage again with what? With ship. And also, we can't forget, also off the coast of Africa, they took you, black man, black man, West Indian man, Haitian man, straight off the coast of Africa and brought you here to America. You came back into bondage with what? With ship. Can go? By the way, whereof I speak unto thee. Thou shalt sit no more again. And did we see our homeland again? Nah. We haven't been back to our homeland since. We still in America here in captivity. 13th Amendment say that, oh, if you're a felon, you get caught up in a crowd, they can take you to jail. Why you think they made the Jim Crow laws? That if you just slaughter them, they can come lock you up. Cause so you can be a legal slave again. This country has never released us from slavery. We are still in bondage. We are, will never see it again. Talking about our homeland, where we're from. This is not our rest. This is not our home, black man, Latino man, Native American man. We're not from here. We are from Jerusalem. We are God's chosen people, the children of Israel, who Moses is talking to. Keep going. And then ye shall be sold unto your enemies. And then, what, hold on. What happened when we got here? When we came on those ships, what happened? We were sold. And we were sold on to who? Your enemies. That's what you need to know, black man, Latino man, Native American man. We have enemies. And when we came to this country, or we were taken over to York, we were sold to our enemies. Who were we sold to? Everybody knows who we were sold to. The colonizer. The white man. The devil that the Bible speaks of. Right. The Bible says that they are our enemy, black man, Latino man, Native American man. Keep going. For bondmen 
and bond woman. We were sold to the white man, the slave woman, and slave man. And is it ring any bells, anybody? Moses talking to the children of Israel. If you fit this scripture, you are one of God's chosen people. Keep going. And no man shall buy you. And no man shall buy you, like I said. They still find ways to put us in captivity. They never let us slavery. They never let us slavery. No man shall buy us. Though the scripture said we were sold, when it says no man shall buy us, that means we would never be free. Until this day in this country, we are not free. We gotta beg for jobs. We gotta have, we gotta change our ways to remain on the jobs. You gotta cut your hair. You gotta wear that suit. Put that towel, button that shirt. You gotta change your ways just to remain here. We gotta go to work for 16 hours just to, to make not enough money. Meanwhile, oppressor walks around the cities that we built on vacation. Enjoying the cities that we built. Yes, sir. Can I do more on that? Yes, sir. Read it from the top. Man. Book of Man. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way again. whereof again. I speak unto thee. Again. Once again, again, if you recognize anything out of that scripture being brought into bondage again, again. with ships, you know that you are one of these 12 tribes on this board. Blacks, Latino, Native Americans, you gotta know who we are. We are God's chosen people. And once you find out, you realize that, the next thing you gotta wonder, okay, I know who I am, but what do I do now? What you do now is, we gotta get come back to the Lord. And how you do that? And do it correctly. You come get you a fly. Come and, come and get a class. Get on now, get in class, and find out how we're supposed to worship the Lord from the men of the Lord, and the eyes should be came. Drop that. Give me the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 1. And the Lord, the Lord has, matter of fact, give me, say there, give me 20, give me uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 48. And the Lord, being that we was bought in bondage, you know, when you went back in the back in the day when your parents put you on punishment, they gave you they gave you a whooping. They would have to go make make you go outside, get a switch. You know what I'm saying? They would pick up, go, go get me that shoe. They pick up an extension cord, frying pan. You know how our parents did it. Well the Lord is is more vicious than anything you can think of. He is a black man. Put up picked up a vicious weapon to come punish his children. And that weapon is the white man. And it's here in the Bible. The Lord said he will bring a people that will be the weapon to punish us. Go yeah. so, The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemy, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. Twelve, baby, twelve. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far from the end of the earth as swift as an eagle. And then the Lord has bring from afar a people as swift as an eagle. Anybody know what the significance of him saying as swift as an eagle? Because this is pointing out the people that the Lord brought to punish us. What's the what's the what's the uh what's the uh the mascot of America? A bald eagle. Yes, sir. If you go back before that, in Rome, Rome's mascot was an eagle. If you go back to Greece before that, the mascot was an eagle. Since all the time, our oppressor's mascot has been an eagle. Let alone, an eagle is the main animal that's in the mountains where our oppressor is from. Our oppressor is a caveman from the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. And that's the main animal you will see up there in the mountains is an eagle. And that's been their mascot through all the time. The Bible is describing our oppressor. The Lord said here, bring a people from far away as swift as the eagle. Go ahead. 
Go on. A nation whose tongue thou shall not understand. You should not understand. A nation whose tongue we didn't understand. English is not our native tongue. Our native tongue is Hebrew. You walk up your house while your house is shot. That's our native tongue. And we did not speak Spanish, Latino brothers. We didn't speak Spanish or English. That was forced on us by this people that God brought and swept as an eagle from far away in the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. That's not our language. Go ahead. A nation of fierce continents. A nation of fierce continents. You know, you know what today? They didn't talk us so much today. They don't even give us evil looks no more. They give you that half a smile, that little crack of a smile when they pass by. Right. Why? That, that little creepy little smile that the old person gives us when they walk past. You don't got to know we know what that is. Y'all smile like the Grinch. That little crooked little smile y'all give blacks and Latinos when y'all walk by. We know you're not our friend. We don't like that smile. That is the creepiest thing to me. That is a horror movie scene when a white person walks past me and they give me that little fake smile. We know you're the devil that the Bible speaks of. We know you put the drugs in our neighborhood. We know you got our women out here thinking it's their body and choice to kill our babies. We know what you're doing. You're not fooling us. We know that's a fierce countenance. Of course you're going to smile at your servants. We already served you. You already conquered us. We know what that smile is about. Bringing a, a, a God brought a people of a fierce countenance with a, a tongue that we did not understand. How wicked is that? You take a people's language away, and then today they say Hebrew is a lost language. Why? Because you beat it out of us. You wicked self beat it out of us. You force us to speak your language. Keep going. A nation of fierce country which shall not regard the person of the old, nor shoot favor to the young. And they don't give a damn if you're young and old. Our person doesn't give a damn. That put, the, our, the, the same people that's supposed to protect us will slam an 80, 90 year old woman down in the ground. And kill a young boy like Trayvon Martin. No remorse. And kill a young 15 year old. No remorse. And go to the grocery store and gun down 10 elderly people in Buffalo. No remorse. No way to go. Then gun down senior citizens wherever they is. And forget about it. Forget about it. When it comes to us young on the corner, they look at us, we can be 12 years old. They treat you like a grown man. Slam you down on the ground. Throw you in jail for life and you ain't even do nothing. Our oppressor is a wicked devil like the Bible speaks of. Right. But he was just supposed to be our punishment. He's supposed to be our punishment. But you know what? Just like just like that, that, that uh, switch, just like that extension cord, that belt, that your parents used to beat you in? What did they do with it when they was finished? They threw it away. They threw it away. Right. And uh, the, the God of the Bible is going to one day get rid of our oppressors because they only use it to punish us. It says it in the Bible. Keep going. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle. Drop that. Give me book of uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3. You know what I'm saying? Hey, when, when we realize who this devil is and stop following his ways, I will have no problem. The reason why we on the bottom today is because we're not doing what the Lord said to do and we following the white man. We're using his drug. You see what I'm saying? Everything that he does, we in his alternative lifestyle. LGBT too. That's not our culture, black man, Latino man, Native American man. That's not our culture. We the last ones who even started to get why you where you think the word down low comes from? In that Christian church, they had the word down low because we never accepted that. Would have been swallowed up. Have you ever been swallowed up? So you had to hide what you were doing. You got that? Go ahead. The book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 3. 
Let no man deceive you. Don't let no man deceive you. You don't need to be in that Muslim mosque doing that Islam. What? Let no man deceive you. In that Christian church, when they tell you to love everybody, meanwhile, they don't. They get at the show, they get justice where we don't get no justice. They look at slavery and say, oh, it's in the past. You should forget about it, it's in the past. Critical race theory. Because they don't want their kids to be embarrassed of what their forefathers have done and what their fathers and mothers have maintained throughout today. It's a reason why we're still in the same situation today. Because the same old pussies from back then, they're still here today. And they do the same things to us. You mean to tell me? They run the world, they run this country. If they didn't want us to be oppressed, they could stop it. But nothing stopped. So you can tell that these same oppressors are the same as their forefathers. Go ahead. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a following the wife first. It says that day shall not come. Well, we're going to find out what day this is. Go up to verse 1 real quick. This is the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 1. Now, we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And yeah, this is the day that it's talking about. The day, the, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Drop back down to three. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come. That day of Jesus Christ coming shall not come. Go ahead. Except, except. This was has to happen for Christ to come. There come a following away first. There'll be a falling away from LGBTQ. There'll be a following away first. Brother, my body, my choice, all that kill your baby, my body, my choice, has to be a falling away from there. Go ahead. There come a following away first. Selling and using the white man's drug of falling away first. Falling away first. Seeing, seeing that oppressor as being a righteous man, we have to fall away from. You see what I'm saying? We got to fall away from all these things. Fall away from his holidays when we celebrating pagan gods. We need to fall away from everything that they do. We need to fall away from his religions. That Islam, that Christianity, that Buddhism, all these oppressors. Their, their gods can't do nothing for us, black man, Latino man, Native American man. We need to realize that their, our king will come back as soon as we fall away from all these things. You want the solution? That's the solution right there. We need to come back to what God said stop, stop doing. What, what to do? Love your brother. Stop eating shrimp, crab, pork, and lobster. These things will put us on top like the Lord's supposed to have us do. You see what I'm saying? Give me the book of Deuteronomy 7 and 6. If you don't believe me that the Lord said that we're supposed to be on top, and all we have to do is fall away from these particular things. I'm going to read it right here in the Bible. The scripture said that we need, to, we need to fall away and we need to realize who that man of perdition is. That man is sick. You know who that is? You know who that is? Every time you go in your Google machine, or you see a picture of so-called Christ, so-called Christ, this is not Jesus Christ. This is the devil that the Bible speaks of. Wait a minute. His name is wait, Caesar wait Borgia. Wait a minute. This is a real person. And he was named a Caesar Borgia. He was the son of Pope Alexander VI. And he, he, he paid Leonardo da Vinci to paint his son. You know what I'm saying? Pope Alexander VI had him paint his son to be Jesus Christ in the so-called Renaissance where they whitewashed everything. That's why when you look at this, you think this is Christ. This is not Christ. That's why you think of the Jews, you think they white. The Jews are not white. That's the Jewish man who's a convert. He was, you got to be born a Jew. If you're not black, Latino, or Native American, you ain't no Jew. And in the Renaissance, which means rebirth, the rebirth of white ideology, they whitewashed everything that meant something. They say color don't matter in the Bible. Well, why does Jesus look like this? 
Right. When the Bible, Jesus is a black what man. What did he say? He's a black man. Jesus is a black man. They said he had skin of brass as it burnt in a furnace. If you take the color brass, which is brown, and burn it in the furnace, you can get a dark skinned man. Well, how the hell did we get that? Right. How the hell did we get a white Christ? Color man. Because if you knew that your skin, your, 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 uh, your king was a black man, you may treat everything different that you do. You may treat yourself, you may treat yourself better, treat each other better. The decisions you make, you might treat yourself like a king, like like a, uh, a true princess, like a true prince. Yeah.